This is, of course, a continuation on Lefebvre. This is the third part of uh, Lefebvre and how he looks at culture and translation in the 90s uh, when he talked about patronage and also uh, the uh, literary system inside and outside uh, that's kind of, and, and the factors that are controlling the actual translation, uh, making it into rewrites at times, um, um, due to patronage. Of course, uh, we talked, I talked about three elements or three factors or three components that's been identified by Lefebvre um, uh, to uh, the patronage um, uh, uh, concept. Uh, and in, so and I'm going to continue now uh, with that. Uh, he has also, um, uh, with regards to the three components, um, uh, he talked about what's called, um, what he termed as undifferentiated patronage and differentiated patronage, two types of patronage. And when, what he meant by uh, undifferentiated, uh, uh, undifferentiated uh, patronage is that when the three components, that is, the economic, economic um, component, the uh, ideological component, and the status component, which I talked about in the previous uh, session, uh, these, if they are met or are provided by the same group or the same person, uh, and that uh, this is uh, the case of um, some of these political systems where they can provide all these three systems, three, three uh, different components, and that's why translators has to conform to the uh, system or to the beliefs of these, uh, this group. Uh, so patronage, uh, that's, the, that's the first one which is called the undifferentiated. The differentiated one, however, is uh, it's not it's the one that where the three elements, three components, which is the economic, the ideological, and the status component, the components, all of these are, are, are not dependent upon each other unlike the undifferentiated, because the undifferentiated, they are dependent on each other, the economic, uh, the ideological, and the status, um, whether the um, patronage is by, by publishers or by a political group or religious group and so on. So uh, in the case of un uh, the dif differentiated means that they are you are differentiating in the uh, patronage between each uh, component and the next. So in other words, the components are not all uh, dependent on uh, uh, on each other. So uh, it's it's a very good uh, important point to to highlight. Now, of course, this is the issue of power here in the operation of uh, patronage wields most power, of course, in the uh, area of ideology, where professionals are influenced by um, uh, or by the by by the poetics or by the by certain beliefs and so on. And there's, of course, the dominant poetics that I talked about with regards to al-Qasida and how it was uh, being influenced by it. And these are uh, what, what are very, very important, uh, the poetics. Now, he has got a chapter on that in, the, in his book about poetics and in which he talks about that how the literary devices, sometimes they might not be available in the translating culture, in other words, in the receiving culture. And because they are not there um, uh, in poetics, especially if you're translating poetry, um, then, uh, which is very difficult to find anyway in the first place. Uh, but that is where uh, the, um, uh, these uh, literary devices, which they include the range of genre, symbols, uh, lay motif, uh, and uh, narrative plot characters, and so on, uh, which are uh, available uh, in um, in the um, European or American uh, culture literature, but not the, may not exist in the um, uh, culture that from which you are translating, as in the case of Al-Qasida, for example. So I mean, also uh, the institutions can determine um, uh, and determine about the uh, on the poetics uh, because they can enforce uh, the dominant po poetics of a certain period. Uh, themselves, according to Lefebvre in 1992, he's, he's, he's talking about that. And there is a, some sort of, uh, some bias here, uh, some bias will be, uh, he sees clear indication of the conservative uh, bias of the system itself and the power of rewriting and 
uh, you know, I mean, they are, because such uh, important, I mean, for example, in the case of uh, promoting the exotic, exotic part of the Arabian Nights, um, what is so unusual. However, deleting some parts, as, as another a scholar I remember, who has actually pointed out that there are certain elements which have been uh, deleted because they are disgusting and not acceptable in the target, uh, in the dominant culture or the target culture at the time. Uh, and they are being reinterpreted or rewritten to conform to the changes in the dominant culture or to the, um, uh, to the uh, dominant poetics uh, in the target culture. And that's how they are being uh, translated, as in the case of Omar al-Khayyam, for example, uh, as well. Uh, and this is uh, the case of having the poetics, uh, the conventions of the Western uh, conventions, literary conventions, being uh, affected uh, or influencing the translator who's translating from Arabic into English. Uh, so the most important consideration, however, for um, uh, Lefebvre is the ideological uh, one, and that is really uh, where he refers to the ideology of the translator or the ideology imposed on the translator by the patron by patronage and 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 that is really also problematic so uh, the uh, the poetical or uh, poetics uh, is uh, if it's dominant in the target language and and, and target culture rather and it's 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 appearing and it's dictating uh, translation strategy and the solution to specific uh, problems. So what is dictating it is poetics and uh, ideology together. Um, and of course, uh, Lefebvre talks about Lysistrata, Lysistrata, which is a Greek play. And in the Greek play, there was a sort of a female uh, piece uh, character uh, who was supposed to bring the Spartan emissary, uh, the Spartan emissary to her, uh, to the to Lysistrata. Um, uh, she's trying to bring her, but of course uh, she says she was ordering her to bring uh, this emissary or envoy to her, um, and she says that if he doesn't give you his hand to come with you, uh, this is the literal translation from Greek, uh, then take him by his Genitals. I mean, uh, she uses the word penis. Uh, now, here, uh, if you want to translate that, um, according to uh, Lefebvre, what he's collected from the English translations over the years, he found that this word, uh, which is a taboo word, to penis, is being translated into various words, uh, saying, if he doesn't give you his hand, uh, you know, uh, then um, uh, take him by his membrum virile, which means his uh, member, by his member, by his organ. Um, another uh, translation was, take him by his nose, or take him by his leg, or take him by his handle, or take him by his lifeline, or take him by anything else. Um, you know, that's often uh, most of these translations that Elofi ever found. Uh, the English translation of, has written some footnotes to indicate this kind of euphemistic approach to these, uh, this term um, and this translation here in particular. 